once again to be our Lord and our Savior, your saving life, and tell them about the Lord's faith. O Lord, let's tell your faith before us, and the Lord will ask you to pass this up on his good side. This is in God's name, and it's in our name. Let us all stand as we begin our evening service. Faith in the one and eight one. Love lifted me. I will sing to the Jesus sing far from the people's door. Love lifted me.
Samuel 4.25, 425. He said to him, O Lord, for I am come.
Father, this evening as we come before you, Lord, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you, dear God, for your love. We thank you, dear God, for this day. We thank you for the word of God and how it works, how it, how it works and it's presented this morning. Lord, we thank you, dear God, for the hearts that are spoken to you. Thank you for the decision that was made. And Lord, we pray right now, dear God, as we are about to receive these offers, my people, dear God, we ask that God may receive blessing to be upon it. Also, we ask that God, dear God, as our words are here, dear God, to be spoken in our midst this evening. We ask that God may open our hearts, God help us, dear God, to receive the rejoice of heart now. Have your divine will in this time now. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 people who have 
chance of being murdered are far greater than your chance of dying in an airplane or automobile. Murder rates in the Bahamas in 2017 was 122 that are here. In 2018, it was 91. In 2019, it was 79. In 2020, it was 73. Now, I did not Check 2022. But nevertheless, murder is a horrible crime against God and humanity. Murder is a horrible crime against any society. It may be the greatest offense of all given the enormity of death and what follows thereafter. Imagine taking a person life, and that person goes immediately into hell. Whether you are a Christian or not, these are thoughts that probably never enters one's mind when the act is being committed. As I said, our scripture text says, Thou shalt not kill, in verse number 13. And so you see, while all murder is killing, not all murder, all killing, rather, is murder. Murder is defined. As premeditated, intentional taking of another person's life. Accidental killing is not classified as murder. As murder. If you look at the book of Exodus, I don't, I'm not going to read this particular portion, but there's a, quite a few verses. Exodus chapter, uh, Exodus chapter, not Exodus, Numbers, but chapter 35, Numbers chapter 35, verse 11 to 28. God gave Israel some regulation. Uh, if, you, if you read the Old Testament, remember when a person would have accidentally killed someone. You kill a, a person, a uh, dad or a person's wife or son or whatever, whoever, relative in that family, you kill them. Someone from that family could kill you, they'd be killed on the street, they would not be um, 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 uh, charged. You see, they would not be, they would not, they would not be any consequences because they call that vengeance. And so, God told the priests to prepare a city that they would call the city of refuge. That the, 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 the avenger of blood will not be able to go. And so they would go to that city, but they have to stay in that city as long as the priest at that time live. Now, when that priest, if that priest should die before the person who is seeking their life dies, then they can come back and that person can't touch them. So that was called the city of refuge, you see. You see? And so if you were involved in an automobile accident and someone dies as a result of an accident, is that murder? It's a killing. We call it vehicular homicide. But you would not be charged for murder because you did not intentionally kill that person. Now, if you was under the influence of alcohol, etc., etc., they may give you a different charge because of that. It's capital punishment for murder. Of course, the word of God gave the uh, prescription for the principle of, of capital punishment. So if there are certain offenses in which man has the right to terminate another man's life. That's what the word of God gives us that. And so when a person says, well, if the government taking their life, they kill it too. So I don't see where they are justified by doing what they are doing. Let's see what the Bible has to say about that. In Genesis chapter 9, verse 6, it says, Whoso shed in man's blood, he had the word of God. By man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. In essence, God is saying here, you have no authority to kill another person. Now, if you kill someone, God said, I have some men that are set aside to execute you. That's the word of God. Look at Numbers chapter number 35. Numbers 35, verse 16 to 18. And if you smite him with an instrument of iron so that he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. That is God's word. That, so when you say you smell it, that means you intentionally, premeditatedly, 
Verse 17. And it, he smelled him with the other. Thorin was but a thorn or stone wherewith he may die, and he died. He is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Verse 18. For if he smite him with a hand, weapon, or wood, wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Now, over and over again, in these verses, you see God giving to Moses uh, some principle in which to deal with people who would be uh, murderers or who would commit this particular crime. And so, the argument about losing a life, whether it's by uh, uh, an accident or whether it's by execution, and to say that it is not right to, for anyone to kill, the Bible does not teach that. The Bible teaches how it should be done. In Leviticus chapter 24, verse 7, it says, And he that killeth any man, he said, shall surely be put to death. Does that mean if you, can, if you kill a man, Without cause, he says, You yourself shall be put to death. And I know sometimes we'd be angry enough to do such a thing when people commit atrocities against us. But the word of God gives us the mandate and how to follow this, whether or not we agree with capital punishment or not, it is a plain mandate. The Bible gives the, uh, uh, the, 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 the instruction how to go about a thing that takes place. Exercise of war is a murder? No, it is not. Through the history of the, the whole world, nations have had to defend their borders or, uh, or even sometimes defend another nation because of the uh, warmongers, the aggressors, or uh, uh, aggressive uh, warmongers such as Putin. It's amazing how Putin is allowed to get away with what he's doing uh, to the Ukrainians. However, uh, the world has come to their aid by supplying them with the necessary uh, capable weapons to defend themselves against this aggressor, you see. And so, throughout history, this is the way God ordained it to be. Even God, at various times, has ordered his people into battle, uh, into battle against the enemy. God told them how to fight against the enemy. Remember when they got into the promised land, God said they was kill all that they let them do not mean that anyone live, and they fail to obey God, and this caused them tremendous. So those who kill in war are not murderers. However, those who engage in brutality and atrocities, like the African um, uh, leader uh, Idi, Idi Amin, I think his name was, he was he uh, who committed genocide against his own people. He was a murderer. People like Castro and Hitler. Stalin, uh, Mussolini, these were men that were murderers. And, 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 and you know, history uh, speaks about them. And we know the way their lives ended. But often, these officers were killed in the line of duty. Homeowners, sometimes, they have to kill to protect their home and family. Because, you know, we wake up in the dead of night. If somebody has violated your uh, privacy, comes into your home, and you wake up and uh, you don't have a gun, the nearest thing that you can find, you don't ask that person what you're doing here. Because number one, I believe if you come into my home, you, 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 you eventually you break into my home, your intent is to do me hurt, to do my family hurt. And if I can sneak up on you, my current struggle will get into action. And I am swinging for home run. You see. I am protecting all that I have. You see. And so, there are times when killing is murder. This is what the commandment speaks to. And this is what I want to address this evening, if I have the time. Is Killing or killing murder. Number one, murder is intruding into God's territory. Murder, when you, when a, when a man or a person
person commits murder, they are trespassing into God's territory. God controls man's entrance into life. It is God who is responsible for life. When man first appeared on the scene, it was at the command of Almighty God. God created man from the dust of the earth. He created man in his own image. He said, he created he male and female created he then. And so the evolution tells us that man evolved. My boy, I didn't believe evolution. I don't see why I can't get saved. I believe it takes more faith to believe and to, to believe that um, uh, some um, uh, try um, um, video um, or, 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 or some little bacteria fall out of the water and, and for some reason uh, uh, it, 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 some of uh, one side the said as some protoplasm began to live from that bacteria. And then this little blob somehow began to change. And eventually, life began on the earth. Then, and that's what evolution is. It just, we have what the word of God says. God formed man from the dust of the earth, Genesis 2 and 7, from the dust of the ground and breathed into is into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Bang! That's it. Now, I don't know if I believe that. When I go through all of this dogma of science, the big bang theory, and I, and I try to figure that out, and it hurts my brain. But this, this is what God gave me. It's so simple. That's the reason why man will not accept it. Man was made in his image. Look at what David thought of the origin of human life in Psalm 139, verse 32 to 16. Here what David, the psalmist says. Psalms 139, verse 13 to 16. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Verse 14, I will praise thee, for I have carefully and wonderfully made marvelous all thy works, and that my soul know it right well. My substance was not hid from thee, when I was made in secret, and curiously walked in the lowest part of the earth, that I did see my substance yet being unperfect. And in the book, all my, uh, uh, and in thy book, all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when yet there was none of them. So here it is. David said, I came from the womb. I was created in the womb. It was my mother and my father created in the womb by the power and the miracle of God. Look at the Job's friend, Elihu, of uh, uh, a version of his own beginning is in Job chapter 33, verse, 40, uh, verse 4. The Spirit of God had made me, and the bread of the Almighty had given me life. Man was created by God. Every time you see a woman pregnant, that's the miracle of God. That's God's working. It is plain from these verses that mankind is the product of a created, a created genius. That is God, the Almighty God. Says so God controls the entire human race. God is the one who brought man into contact with life. And God created him from the dust of the earth. They are made a lifeless body until God gave to him the bread of life. And so it is clear. God controls the, the also the death. God is in control of the death of mankind. Now, you say, but men do take one another's life. That's still a human being that they are in control. They are violating, they are trespassing. You must acknowledge that God Himself is in the control of life. He is the one who establishes the boundary of cross, which no man should cross. But yes, man violates the word of God. Job 14 and 5 says, Seeing his days are determined. Listen, God designed 
of return, how long a person can live. This is what Job is saying, seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. God has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass it. Who cannot pass? That he cannot pass. He said, You will not live longer. Now, there are times when you might live longer, but when he said, But you, you have an appointment with death. You, when that time comes, you will die unless God gives you favor and you come to that day on. Go to Psalms 104, verse 29. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die and return to their dust. It is God who does that, not man. It is clear that men can do certain things that can shorten one's days, according to the word of God. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 27 says, The fear of the Lord for all his days. What does it mean to live a little bit longer? Now, when you read the Bible, it tells us that we are talking how many, how, how many years? Seventy. Three score and ten. That's um, uh, um, uh, uh, twenty is a score. Ten is a half a score. So three score and ten, that's seventy. Say, but, but, but by reason of this, four score, we well, will be dead by five. And we will this year be for last year be for the living one hundred and nine. I don't know what it is he did. But whatever it is, he's still living. And now he's working on the 10 and 100 and that. Job 15, verse 31 to 33. Let not he that is deceived trust in vanity, for vanity shall be his recompense. Live a loose life, live a careless life, and see if you would not die before you die. That's what he said. Verse 32, it should be accomplished before his time, and his brand should not be green. You wonder why so many people are in the state that they are in and they're young. I mean, they, some of them are in their twenties and in their thirties. Some atrocity went on. Really, it's in the, you know, right now you have a lot of little children suffering from. Um, uh, different diseases because of their parents. They're born with these diseases and the curses upon them. So, I remember a little girl, a, a, a lady that my brother was married to, she, she, you know, she's deceased now, and she had a niece. She was seven years old and had diabetes. She had it so bad. She was an insulin. Seven year old child. I don't know if he's still alive. Maybe in the white building, I don't know if he's still alive. I don't know if he's still alive. I don't know if he's still alive. I can call him. And so, he says, notice verse number 33. He shall shake off his upright and unright by the great as the mind and shall cast off his power. As the oil of essence, the, the, before the grapes shall come to maturity, that means before your time to die, you will die. Before the flowers bear the fruit, you, if, 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 if they fall from the tree. That means your life is shortened. Job 22, verse 15 to 16. Has thou found the old way which wicked men have trodden? Luke, verse number 16. Which were cut down out of time, whose foundation was overthrown with a flood. God said they was not supposed to die the time when they died. They died because of their wickedness, because of their sin. Life is shortened. Psalm 55, verse 23, For thou, O God, shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. But I will trust in thee. Um, uh, remember that, um, uh, that, that um, uh, Colombian drug dealer called Pablo Escobar? He was a young man. They, they said he had billions of dollars that he made from drugs, but he had killed 
thousands of people to achieve what we had. At one time, uh, the, the, the Colombian government had suggested that they call him. I mean, so he's going to build his own prison. We don't want to be here. This is how powerful he was. He went ahead and he constructed almost what they call a vacation home, a place that for him to stay. But he was still running his drug cartel. He had place where he had his women, uh, he had his women and had his, uh, his, his people coming into the government. He just allowed them to do what he wanted to do until America got involved in the whole thing because he was flooding the world with drugs. I mean, he affected the Bahamas, he affected South America, he affected North America, he affected, he affected the Caribbean. I mean, everywhere he affected with his drug money. But you know, he was a young man. He was cut down before time. I'm telling you, all of that millions of dollars, probably billions of dollars that he had, he never enjoyed it. He said, he saw, so the word of God tells us that, 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 that they will not live out half of their time. They will die before their time. Notice Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 17. Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why should thou die before thy time? People die before their time. Hmm. That's the word of God. You ever hear people say, oh, now when your time is over? No. Not always. That's the, that, that's the, uh, the life of, uh, of the dead. They want to die? No. There's no truth to that. God never intended for those to die a cruel death. When God created man and put man in, put man here to serve him, that man would enjoy a good and a blessed life. But man violating God's law and God's counsel, God bring upon themselves the wrath of God. And the word of God says in Romans, the wicked of sin is death. The same token of obedience to the Lord can lengthen man's days upon the earth. We read that in verse number 12 of our scripture reading this evening. Verse 12 says, Honor thy father and thy mother. Why? He said that thy days may, it is that it shall be long, may be long. Upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And so, maybe that's what I'm doing today. Honor his father and his mother. Remember, I often say to you, a lot of times people say, I hate kids. I talk to young people all the time. They come to me with complaining about their parents. They say, Mommy did this, or Daddy did this, and all that. You know, and, you know, and they expect me to do this. And I say, Listen, leave your mom and your dad to the Lord. Don't you take matters into your own hands. God said, honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long. Now, God didn't say he can do it with mommy and daddy, but he said what he can do with you. He that curses mother or father shall die to death. That's the word of God. So let, don't you interfere with God's reign. Leave it alone. Proverbs 10 verse 27, the fear of the Lord prolong his days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Why there are so many funerals of, of young people not yet 40 and 50 years old? Time. Psalms 91 verse 16 says, With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation when you want to God. God said, I'll give you long life. Hezekiah, time will come for him to die. God told him, Get your house in order for you to have God. You want him to let him die tomorrow. Hey, that's a plus. That's a lesson. Get your house in order because tomorrow you're going to die. But every time, you know, you can even die about So he turned his back to the wall and he left. He begged God for mercy to let him live for four years. And this year, God gave him 15 more years. And then the guy messed up. Listen, when God, if God, and then you, Right now, where I am at, that's the blessings of God. But you know, I'm 
already endured three extra years working on four books. Some of you have enjoyed four or five or more, you know, and you're working on others. These things are subject to only to the mercies of God and the sovereignty of God. God is the only one. No man has the right to deliberately and intentionally take the life of another, except it be for those things that are already mentioned. Whether you are of uh, the law of the land, or, or whether you are a, uh, a soldier in the army fighting for your country or for the world, or whether you are protecting your property, no man has the right to take another man's life. God is the giver of life, and He alone should be the taker of life, except for those things which I just mentioned. Try to assume this position when we take another person's life. So, not only does murder intrude into God's business, number one, but number two, murder shortens a person's life. As I said earlier, when you kill someone, the days that they were supposed to live, you intruded and you stopped. Murder is, listen, can you imagine? Take a man. I, I, see, I, watch, I watch the news a lot. And so I see a lot of times uh, a, a parent gave the house some home property. And whether the mother or the father, mostly or most of the fathers, they would end the life because whether the woman, the woman don't want him anymore. Whatever the situation is, they kill the innocent child along with the woman. And that bastard will take that gun and put it to his head. Now, sometimes they do. But for the most part, if you go in that five years, that end yours too, because you got to pay. You see, murder will carry out in many ways. I'll try to share a few of them with you this evening. As I gave you the definition of murder, of murder earlier, the unlawful and malicious premeditated kid taking on another person's life. That's the way we have to describe it. That person will think about suicide, physical murder. Physical murder. Well, no, that's not suicide. The person is self murder. Physical murder is when another human being takes another human being's life. Genesis 4, verse 8. It says, Cain and Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass. When they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. The word slew him means killed him. He slayed his brother. That was the first killing of murder recorded in the Bible or in history. In this verse, Cain deliberately killed his brother out of vindictiveness, out of jealousy, out of malice. He took the life of his brother Abel because the Lord should a favor to the sacrifice of his brother and his, he almost strangled to death from the smoke because he did not bring what God requested. See, a lot of times we want to do what we want to do and wanted to be accepted. Since that day, the history of the world has marked the constant study of murder in the hearts of men. Let me see. Uh, and I can tell you, and maybe all of you here tonight probably have had some effect from it in some way or another, whether it is directly or indirectly. As a matter of fact, I had a nephew that was killed in 2012. But before he was killed, he killed somebody. He went to prison. He spent 15 years in prison and he was released from prison on a, 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 a I don't know if they use the word for rule, but he was killed before a time from the drama. And he'd been out of prison for six to eight months. And somebody gunned him down. He accepted as you know, it was revenge. Because you know, the, the gang life, when you live that life, you, you know you may die the gang death. And, and for that case, uh, I would say that probably is the reason why he was, his life was short. I had a brother who was killed via an accident. He was in a he was in a club drinking and, and cursing. Him and a man just had a cuss out. He jumped on his bike and he was riding off. And somehow the man was riding behind him, knocked him off his bike. And he was driving.
Adam and Eve did, don't show the dancer, don't know what's coming, bite, and he fell on the back wheel. He just loaded down with debris. Life rolled over him, touched his head, and stands upon him. He was still. Now, we do not know whether or not the man intentionally done it. The Lord did not know whether the man intentionally but he done it as an accident. This is called physical murder. So, uh, as I can tell you about, about the experience of having uh, somebody murdered in that capacity or that, or that form, then not only is a physical murder, but there is self murder. This is where one takes their own life. Call it suicide. Fact that this can be a very, um, uh, I would say, um, um, sensitive matter. I don't know if anyone in here have had that experience. I will not elaborate on that too much. But when a person is, is driven to this particular point in their lives, it's often something that overwhelms them. Whether it is a husband or wife or girlfriend or boyfriend, whether it's finances or whether it's uh, for some other means, I do not know. But a lot of times, people come to the place in life where they have financial reverses and other things, and then, and so, they go and they uh, take their own lives. The end of life is to steal the right of God. So this can never be. God himself has the right to take another man's life. We are in a time Every 90 minutes, a human agent tries to take his or her life. Every 30 minutes, uh, 30 minutes, one succeeds. This ought not to be. I, you know, I thought it was so the first time in the Bahamas when I heard about a, uh, a suicide. A, a young person was killing themselves. Man, you know, I, I, I said, what the world is going to do? I, I took the Bahamas as the world because I never heard of something like that before. Years ago, this young man, I, I think, uh, he was uh, uh, implicated in, in, in some, in, in some uh, uh, sexual uh, situation with, with, uh, with a, young, a, a younger person. And, and, uh, and, and when I got the phone call, I think it was a web in one of those areas, they said he hung himself. He was dead. He was supposed to be going to court the next couple of weeks or so. But could not deal with that. When a person was shot to suicide, you said they are falling um, uh, uh, into a trap. They are refusing to allow the Lord to give them the support or the opportunity uh, to find comfort and to find relief of everything they need. I pray God that none of us will ever come to that point. There's another side of self murder a side which many are guilty. This is the one that uh, is more important to me, that the one that I just mentioned. I do not know if you have been there. I haven't gotten there yet. I voluntarily took myself of drinking soda bottles. Such a, I mean, any soda bottle, I don't drink any at all. I check for Dr. Pepper once a year. You know, uh, you know I can't kick Dr. Pepper. I, I, you know, I do it, but I do it one, and I don't have to have my ability to do it just with myself. And I don't drink it in the Bahamas either. If I don't go away, I don't drink the Dr. Pepper. I said, I'm going to go to the U.S. And I get my Dr. Pepper. And sometimes I get another juice or something, and I mix it with that. And so I make a cocktail of Dr. Pepper, and I, and I would sip that. And I was going to touch it again the next year. But again, doctors did not tell me not to do that. The doctor didn't tell me to stop drinking coffee. The doctor didn't tell me to stop drinking Coca Cola. The doctor didn't tell me to stop doing these things. But I elected not to do those things. Until then, I had my heart condition and everything. And the doctor said, You will drink this coffee today. But I said, As a result, I don't want to drink coffee. So I said, You know, I want to do this. And they brought me some for, I think I spent about eight or nine days in the hospital. And each day, they brought me a cup of coffee every morning. Dr. Sands. Dr. Freddy Sands told me don't drink it. You know? And God, I tell Dr. Freddy Sands, I said, the doctor didn't give me so I didn't drink it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But I'm not, I'm not, I don't drink it. After I came home, once in a while, my wife would give me a cup. But I still don't drink it like that. You see? Now, 
Now, look at that. This is what they're driving at. How many times are people that are saying to you, keep on doing this, keep on that? And they, they trip and they suffer a lot. They said, they said, you got to get it. And then they go, and then they do it. And then when they look in here, and trip and die. That just makes suicide. Because you were warned, you were told, it's going to cost your life. And they still go and they do it. You find people that today that they are taking a certain amount of cocktail medication because of them violating the laws of health. And so, they are murdered. They, they are murders of themselves, whether it is over, uh, whether you've done it in a, uh, in a moment's time, or whether you've done it over a 10 year period, you're slowly. Poison to kill yourselves. Then we have medical emergencies. I can't remember back in this year, what that year, may have been 2000 or 1998, I was walking with him. Yeah. He had he had he had made a machine. And to me, uh, only after I start when I did research, you know when you're being executed by the state, they have a machine, you know that they have uh, uh, three different medications that they use to, uh, to, to, to that's the legal legal and get and that that machine that he had because he was a he was a physician. And so he made this machine. And he would if a person said they want to die and they contact him, he would get the machine, take it to where they ever they are. And he would load them in with this poison. And he would show them with what to touch when they're ready to go. But he would sit there and he would witness, he would, he would uh, instruct them how to do it, and then so they would do it, and then they would die. And he would say, I didn't kill them, they killed themselves. And for a long time, I didn't understand it how the state could not find a way to charge them for um, uh, for aiding and abetting, assisting people in murder. Eventually, they came up with something and they did it. And I think he died in prison. I don't know whether he administered his own death or not. I don't know how it came about. But that was murder, no matter how you look at it. You see? And so it took a long, long time to do that. Nevertheless, thank God to find the charge of his murder, or Jesus is as it was. And so, while you think that this is a very um, uh, act, uh, should not happen, some countries around the world, they are now practicing euthanasia. What well, that is, is it's slim. That's when you become a, a burden to a family or to the, or to the government. You're too old for their society. And so they have you legally put to death. You say, well, that doesn't happen in the country. You better die. Say that. Right now, remember, healthcare is becoming one of the most burdensome uh, expense for governments. Healthcare. Billions of dollars have been spent on healthcare. So you know when you get free medication nowadays, you're getting now what they call the top down here in the dinero. Government cannot afford to give you grant. And so when you go when I go to get my blood pressure medication, my heart medication, they did not know I want brand or generic. So I have to end up paying. This is my health. If I'm going to get the brand free, I'm going to Because I can't get the brand free, it will cost me some money. But I pay. You know why I pay? Because I treasure my life. Now, one doctor told me they all made the same substance. I don't believe it. One is cheaper than the other. You see? So something is wrong with that picture. And so, therefore, I believe the time will come when healthcare will get so burdened for governments. No care for the age will become so taxing. Remember now we got old folks only now to you. Now we have it in the United States, we have it here now too. And government is paying for most of it. Their pension money is going to the old folks home. I don't know if there are any other subvention wrong with that. And one of these days, government want to add up. I said, you know, we 
be scattered every year. You take care of these people who they ain't do nothing with society no more anyhow. They, they just won't die every day. Let's get up and take over some stuff in. And they put a couple of spoon full of um, 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 uh, well, well, arsenic, what is it? Arsenic. Mm. Uh, uh, well, what is it? What is it? But it is possible. You see, it can happen to the lake, it can happen here. So, they call this mercy killing. This is murder. Then there's another murder. They call it cremation. You know what that is? That's a what thing. That's murder in the first degree. Psalms 139, verse 13 to 16. I read it to you earlier. For thou, I just read verse number 13. For thou hast possessed my rings, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Until life begins at the moment of conception. Hear what Jeremiah 1 and 5 said. Before I formed thee, in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth up of the womb, I sanctified thee. Jeremiah wasn't born yet. Jeremiah wasn't conceived yet. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. In the New Testament, Luke chapter 1, verse 41. And the key to pass. And when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, good, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. John leaped into her womb. My dear beloved, abortion is first degree murder. Society seems to view the unborn human as just waste material. I had some information, I lost it all during uh, the hurricane. I mean, it, uh, uh, this is this is information that I got from a clinic in the U.S. The Christian society took the pictures of garbage can filled with aborted fetus out in the back of the clinic. This was in a movie. This was reality. And they were using, now this is what the, uh, by the, the, the organization that supplied me with the information that said they were subtracting something from the fetus and making makeup with it. Putting it into makeup and other things. Since abortion um, uh, was legalized in the world, there have been. 37 million abortions performed in the U.S. alone. 37 million. That is approximately many regular, and the ratio is about probably 40 to 30 per day. One every 20 seconds. Who oh, their advocates claim that the mothers deserve the right to choose. They said they have the right over their own bodies. And what they should have done is control their sexual behavior. This will not happen. Abortion is murder, it ends the human life. That is the, uh, the, 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 the demon of this world. They violate God's word when a country refuses to respect and protect the life of the unborn, then the curse of God will be upon that nation. Because blood, innocent blood. says, I agree that it 
is said by the by them of old time, thou shalt not kill. Whosoever shall kill will be in danger of the judgment. Luke chapter number 16, verse 20 to 25, 22 to 25, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, and the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. And see Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom, and he cried said, and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Now notice, notice this. Every act of murder, or every sin, as a matter of fact, but act every many things that they have gotten away with murder. That they have loved and gotten away with. When they face God on that day, Judgment, God will render justice to them. They will remember. This is what verse 25 says of Luke 16. So Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. There is coming a day of reckoning. A day when all murderers will remember. They will know. I was watching a news clip this evening. Four young men were brought before a U.S. judge. They killed, or one person was killed, but they were standing together, the four of them men in there, breaking into people's homes with a gun, to rob, to steal. If one pulled the trigger, the four of them was charge for murder. And their sentence was life without parole. One was a mute. The other, the other three, they were uh, hearing people, they, I mean, they were normal. One of them lost his cool. And now he is facing human justice and he couldn't deal with it. I mean, and they had to Restrain him in the courtroom when he was sentenced to, I think, 200 and something years without parole. Mm. He said, Then you will die here. He couldn't live with that. You might have been that the world stands before God. Mm. That was man. 200 years will come and go. Eternity. Eternity is. Ever and ever and ever. I close after reading this Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through 15. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead fall in the great shine before God, and the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Yes. Do what you want to do. Live the way you want to live. Act how you want to act. Believe what you want to believe. There is coming a day when you're going to lay dead. Mm. And I wish that would have been the end of it. But the word of God just told us that there's going to be a delivery day. There will come a day when you will come forth from the grave and you will be all alive and coherent. You start before a white cross. Then you're going to remind you of what you would have done during your life to stay alive. You, you, maybe you have sat under messages such as this. Maybe you have heard all that has to, uh, uh, was to be said about life or death, about heaven or hell. You chose not to accept any of it. You chose to follow your own path. You chose to do your own thing. But then now the time will come down has come. Final judgment has come. And 
I will stand before the great deliverer. The great I am. The great judge. The great savior. Who died to save the soul of you. He's Lord. Now he is no longer your savior. But he is your judge. And he says to you. This is your life. This is your eternity. Oh, eternity, eternity. How I wish it was not so. It is so sweet. I cannot prove it to you other than what the word of God says. But I can tell you it is real. If you go on living your life as you are and doing the things that you do, you've been doing it all the time, you will come to the place where you will come to grip with it and you will have to face it. Only he and say, we ought to be encouraged in the everlasting life. And then the devil and his angels will be able to the end of hell. To an end. Would it not one of those young men be about to be raised? A day, imagine, and they have to constrain him. Four or five men and women run around him and they uh, practically drive him out of the courtroom to take him to where ever he will spend the rest of his life. And after if he lived to be 60 years, that will be it on the side. If he lived to be 100 years, that will be it on the side. But eternity, there is no number. Eternity, as long as God lives, you will spend eternity wherever you go, heaven or hell. This feeling is all feeling already. Are you tonight as you go? You might be murdering yourself right now by ignoring the word of God. Murdering yourself. I plead and I beg this evening, you do not know how to save you, to trust you. If you know anyone who might be living in that state, you can trust them and be a witness to them. Let us stand. Eternal God, in our heart, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for your word this day. We have lifted up across our land. Father, we have hearts, ears, and heard. Oh God, I pray for those who were responded in time. Lord, that they may find favor in your face. Oh Lord, God, for the man who wants to young person, who know you not, Lord, and shape that they got in the midst of men that they will come to trust you more truly. I just be confident in God to go this week with a burden for others. And all of the burden is being attached to you. Lord, I think this is true. And then it was true. Father, I have eyes. Father, we look forward to our meeting service. It is tonight. And I say, you say, I'm the blessing and the worship of the Lord. In Jesus' name,